From lichens to sequoias, the diversity of plant life seems infinite. Since the dawn of agriculture, human beings have never ceased to incorporate plants and vegetables into their diet, constantly increasing their nutritive value, improving and adapting them to their specific needs in order to feed themselves, to treat themselves, to clothe themselves, but also, in doing so, they have learned to appreciate the flavors, aromas, colors, beauty, and subtlety of plant life. The farmer planted the crops best suited to the soil and the climate. He then collected the seeds from the harvest and selected the best grains in order to plant them again. He shared his improvements with his neighbors, thereby contributing to agricultural biodiversity. It was a cycle which seemed eternal and which guaranteed mankind a stable food supply. In the 20th century, however, with the application of industrial methods to agriculture, plants came to be seen only as a source of financial gain. The farmer himself became an industrial worker of the land. Little by little, the common heritage we call seeds was progressively monopolized. They tended to become the exclusive property of a handful of private companies. It all began in 1923, when the occupation of seed and plant breeder was recognized. The notion of variety was protected by law as a commercial identity. Nine years later, an official catalog was created listing the species and varieties of plants which could be sold. Less than 20 years later, it had become strictly forbidden to sell seeds which were not included in the catalog. Nowadays, farmers are no longer permitted to reuse a part of their harvest to replant the following year. They are obliged to buy commercial seeds regularly or to pay an obligatory voluntary contribution. In 1998, a new right of intellectual property was introduced in Europe, the patent. A patent is a title of ownership which normally relates to an invention and allows its owner to be the only person to exploit the invention. It is accorded for a period of 20 years after which the invention enters into the public domain. It is not possible to patent a plant variety. It is possible, however, to patent the characteristics of a plant or the process of development of a seed. The best known example of this is the creation of genetically modified plants. So far, four transgenic crop types are being cultivated on a mass scale. The soybean, maize, oilseed rape, and cotton. Many still believe that they represent progress for mankind. The consequences, however, are worrying. Non-GM plants are easily contaminated by pollen containing patented genes from fields which are often quite far away. The farmer of the contaminated field finds himself obliged to pay royalties to the owner of the patent of the contaminating GM seed. In France, a law passed on the 2nd of June 2014 prohibits the cultivation of genetically modified maize. Nowadays in Europe, we are witnessing the multiplication of patents of native characteristics since they are integral to the plants. For example, farmers who cultivate traditional varieties and have donated the seeds and know-how they possess to everyone find themselves prohibited from using them themselves as soon as a seed company gets its hands on them. This is biopiracy. The domestic genetic heritage of our agriculture, enriched over millennia by our farmers, is now threatened by unprecedented impoverishment since a handful of seed companies controls and dominates the world seed market. It is the food security of all of humanity which could in turn be threatened. Alarm bells are ringing and some are taking action in order to create a vision for the agriculture of the future. Other, more virtuous agricultural practices are being put into place, such as crop rotation, adding non-cereal crops to the rotation, covering fields, the reintroduction of hedgerows using natural fertilizers, and less frequent plowing. True progress, however, would be to allow farmers to be involved in seed production in order to promote varieties which require fewer fertilizers and pesticides, to promote those which are best suited to local conditions and the local land type. The objective is to develop an agroecology which creates more, better paid and sustainable jobs which will encourage biodiversity.